Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Konnichiwa and hello everybody. I hope you are all geared up for your Japanese lesson today. Well, last time in our last uh, lesson, I left you with a small phrase in the end which I did not explain. So, I will explain it today. I left you with this phrase, Ashita mata aima sho. A simple phrase which is used very commonly in Japan, when you part from someone, when you part from somewhere, say probably from a class or from a meeting, you generally say, and if you are going to meet the person again, people again, then you say, mata ashita aimasho. So, well, I used ashita mata aimasho. Ashita is very simple, ashita means tomorrow, mata means again, and aimasho means let us meet. So, the meaning of this phrase is let us meet again tomorrow. So, we will just repeat after me once. Ashita mata aimasho. Once again, Ashita mata aimasho. So, now last time in our last lesson, I had given you some assignments. Did you complete them? Well, I am going to give you the solution as well. It is a very simple one. Assignment 1 was match group A with group B. So, you have group A over here, here listed in Roman. You have it in Hiragana as well. And then we have group B over here, which is the English meanings. So, I will just point it out to you once for pronunciation, so that you get the right pronunciation. The answers are Ashi Leg Ari Ant Karasu Crow Koara Kola bear, isu, chair, kani, crab, iruka, dolphin, Kohi, coffee. Saru, monkey. Sakana, fish. Suzume, sparrow. Well, I had given you another assignment to match group A with group B. Now, group A has numbers written over here in Japanese and group B has the English equivalent written over here. So, you just had to match them. I will do the matching right here in front of you, so that you can also get the pronunciation well. So, I start now. Hachi. Eight Ni Two Roku Six Q Nine
Jew. Ten. Sun. Three. Shichi or Nana. Seven. Ichi. One. Yon or she four go five. So I hope now you would remember all the pronunciations properly. Now this was your third assignment where there are a lot of pictures given and you have to name the animals and the objects in the pictures. So well, let us see what the first one is. Well, the picture is of a crab. So what is a crab in Japanese? You have done the word, it is kani. And then we have a watch. A wristwatch which is toke. Kaban. We have sushi here which is a Japanese delicacy and you can see rice in white. These are rice balls and on top of the rice balls you have raw fish. So it is called sushi and it is had with soya sauce. Then we have tamago which is egg. You can see a table over there. A table is called a tsukue. It is T S U K U E. Su ku e and not su ku e, s u k u e. Please remember that it is su ku e. Keshi gomu, which is a rubber or an eraser. Then we have kumo, which you can clearly make out is a spider. and karasu which is a crow. It is all black with a long beak. It is a crow, karasu. Ari, Ari is an ant. You have this boy sweating. So well, sweat is ase. And then we have osara, which is a plate you can see. A lot of trees in this picture. It is mori, looks like a wood, looks like a small forest. So a forest is a mori in Japanese. We have boshi over here. And the pronunciation is boshi, which is a long O sound, means a cap. Empitsu, and you can see the spelling is E N P I T S U, but when you pronounce it, it is E M, Empitsu. So before P, the sound N changes to M. Please remember it is M pizza. Then we have Megane, which clearly you can see what it is. Uma, a horse. Isu. And 
Then we have Hachi, which is a bumblebee, and Hachimitsu is honey. And then we have Kutsu. So, this is your vocabulary section for you. You can learn a lot of words over here, speak aloud, say it out aloud, and you will feel comfortable. So now I hope you will also practice at home and get the right pronunciation. This is a small picture for you over here. You were supposed to name the objects in the picture. So again for the pronunciation we will do it right here. Boshi, Kaban, Isu, Hon, Empitsu, Kasa. Now, we were doing pronunciation practice. It will help you in saying words. You will get used to the sounds. So, this pronunciation practice is extremely essential. Try to do it out aloud and over here, please repeat after me. So, let us see what the first one is. A e u a. Ho he he he. A e u o. Sa su sa se. Ke ki ku ko. Tachi tatsu. Ko ki ki ke. Tachi tsu te. Kaki ku ke. Techi tsu to. Keki ku ko. Techi tatsu. O e e a. Tochi tate. O o e a. Sashi suse. A e u a. Seishi suso. Sashi sasu. Nani no ne. Ha hi ha hu. Ne ni nu no. So well, this was your pronunciation practice. Now, if you remember, in the last lesson, we did the scripts in Japanese. So we started with hiragana script. We did three sections of hiragana, which is the vowels. We did the ka series and we did the sa series for you. I will write down all of it for you on the board before I start on pronunciation practice. The vowel series is a, e, u, a, o. Then the k series is ka, ki, ku, K and ko. We 
please try to get the right pronunciation. Then we have the sa series or the s series. Sa, she, su, se, and so. This is what we did last time. You will notice that this sound is a little different. This is an exception here. It is not C, but it is she, similar to the English she. Pronunciation wise, it is similar to S H E in English. So, please remember that. Now, today we will do the T sound, the H sound, and the N sound for you, hiragana. As I had told you earlier, hiragana has 46 such symbols. Hiragana has 46 symbols for 46 different sounds. So, the first set of hiragana is 46 symbols. We have already done 15 over here. Now, again we will do 15 more. Ta with vocabulary as well. Ta, take, tatemono, chi, tulip, chizu, tsu, tsukue, tsuchi. Tegami, Tebukuro, To, Tora, Tomato, so you have so many words, new words for you to learn now. You will notice that the sound ta is not followed by sound t and tu as in ka ki and ku it is ta chi su te and to this is an exception over here and again this is also an exception please remember these two are exceptions in the ta series I will write down the ta series also for you. Ta, chi, su, te, and to. Ta, chi, su, te, to. So please repeat after me. Ta, chi, su, te, to. Some new vocabulary with ta series. Tanuki, Tamago, Tabako, Chita, Chikatetsu. Chi, tsunami, tsuru, terebi, tokage, toke. Now, this is tsu. Please remember. Su. It is different from tu. The next series is 
the na series the na series na nana nami ni ningyo ninjin nu nuigurumi nuno ne neko nezumi no nokogiri nori so you have more vocabulary for you to learn nabe namida niji news nuru numa neji nedan nodo nogyo all these new words new vocabulary that we are doing over here now will actually come in handy so please practice at home get this vocabulary try to say these things more often so that your tongue is used to these new sounds you can pronounce easily and it's easier for t for you to speak when we actually start conversation so now we have ha series for you over here ha hana hasami hi hige himo fu fune fusen he hebi hea ho hone hoseki so these are all new words for you for your tongue to get used to these sounds for your mind to get used to these sounds when you speak so that it comes out easily you need to practice more at home some more vocabulary with ha series hana hachi himo fusuma henji heiwa hoki hon now i'll write down the ha series as well for you ha he who he ho now you will notice this sound is somewhat who and somewhat fu so whichever is easy the actual sound is who as you blow air out but you can also say 
Fu if it is very, very inconvenient. Well, I'd like to tell you one thing that as we are doing hiragana, that is the first script that we do in Japanese. And of course, everything can be written in hiragana. We do not require all the three scripts that I told you about in our last lesson. But later on, you will notice yourself that without kanji and without katakana, it becomes a little difficult for Japanese to read the script. Why? You would like to know why? It is very simple because when you write in Japanese, you do not put spaces in between words as we are all used to doing in English. And because there are no spaces, one does not know when the word begins and when the word ends. So, it is extremely essential. So, it is easy when you have three scripts it is easy to understand when a word is beginning and when a word is ending, even if the space is not there. So, well now, enough of vocabulary for today. There is lots to learn at home. We will start on simple conversation over here. Something very, very simple. This is, how do you do? How would you introduce yourself in Japanese? How would you tell who you are in Japanese. So, simple word is jiko shokai. Jiko shokai means self introduction. We will do self introduction today, first chapter for you. Simple conversation. Hajime mashite, watashi wa kumar desu. Dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Hajime mashite, watashi wa Honda desu. I will read the conversation to you first and then I will explain it. Now, you can see over here how it is written. It is written in all the three scripts. Of course, this is hiragana. I am sure you would have understood this part is hiragana. Now, this small thing over here, this small character that you see over here, this is kanji. These characters we will do a little later. There is one over here, then there is another one over here and then you can see something written, two characters written over here also. So, you will notice that we have hiragana, we have kanji and then as I told you in our previous chapter, in our previous lesson, katakana is used for foreign words. So, well, it is a foreign word. So, it is very, very clear. Of course, I have given the spacing for us to understand and read, but generally when you write in Japanese, there is no spacing at all in between words. Now, I will read it out that this conversation is between Kumar and Honda, Kumar san and Honda san. As I told you, for Mr., Miss, and Mrs., we use san in the end after the name. So, Kumar san and Honda san, conversation between the two, I will just read it out to you. Hajime mashite. Watashi wa kumar desu. Dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Hajime mashite. Watashi wa Honda desu. Dozo yoroshiku. Of course, it is a little difficult to understand anything now, but I am sure two words you would have caught kumar and Honda. Okay? So, now I will explain this to you. Hajime mashite. This word actually means to start, to begin anything. Hajime mashite word means to start or to begin. Now, this is a very, very common phrase, very common phrase used when you meet someone for the first time. When you introduce yourself to anybody, to a group or to anybody for the first time only, then you will use this phrase. Hajime mashite, watashi wa, you tell your name, watashi wa so and so this and dozo yoroshiku onigai shimasu. I have just told you hajime mashite which means to start or to begin. It is association, friendship. Let us begin. Watashi word. Watashi means I. This 
word this sound written here in bold is va. It is a particle and particles are a very, very important integral part of the language. Why? Because they join words to make proper, complete, meaningful sentences. So, we need va over here. Then Kumar is the name of this person who is introducing himself and this over here in the end is a verb. So, from here I am sure you can make out the Japanese is a subject object verb combination. The subject comes in the beginning, object in the middle of the sentence and verb unlike English comes in the end. I will of course explain what to you later, but for the time being I will read it again. Hajime mashite, watashi wa kumar desu. So, now you can understand this gentleman here is introducing himself as Kumar, I am Kumar. We go on to the third one, dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. This is a phrase, it can be divided into parts of course, the complete meaning of the phrase is that I am introducing myself, I am so and so, I place myself in your hands for your favorable consideration in the future. So, I am sure you can understand some of it over here, of course, va and this I will explain a little later. So, once again, hajime mashite, watashi wa kumar desu, dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. And Honda san again does exactly the same, he says hajime mashite, watashi wa Honda desu, dozo yoroshiku. Now, as I told you earlier, wa is a very important particle, it is a grammatical particle and it tells you about the topic or the subject of conversation. Va signifies as is written over here the primary subject or topic in a sentence. So, it is very, very important and generally the topic would be a noun or a pronoun would be there. So, generally va will follow a noun or a pronoun. As I said the verb part comes in the end, this is a verb, but it is not a complete verb as such. It is a combination of verb and a particle and is being used in the language as a verb. Well, it is given for your reference over here, hajime mashite, an expression used when introducing oneself or meeting someone for the first time only and is similar in meaning to the English phrase, how do you do or nice to meet you. Dozo yoroshiku, a phrase used together with hajime mashite when introducing oneself to someone, meaning pleased to meet you. The phrase is a request for the other person's favorable consideration in the future. Yoroshku actually means to convey my best, convey my good wishes. It is also used in formal written Japanese to convey regards to someone. And you have the example here, you can read it. Onigai shimas is a request to start the association or relationship and is a request for approval and consideration by the other individual in the future. So, these are just phrases which you have to learn and memorize. Well, now as we did this first sentence over there, vata shi va this. It is very simple, watashi as I told you is I, wa is the particle which I talked about earlier and over here you can have your name. So, it can be any name, anybody can be introduced like this, Tanaka, a Japanese name, Suzuki, another Japanese name, Honda, another Japanese name, an English name, Jane, Rao, an Indian name. So, anyone, any, any, you can introduce yourself like this, watashi wa Tanaka desu, watashi wa Suzuki desu, watashi wa Honda desu, watashi wa Jane desu, watashi wa Rao desu. So, simple introduction over here, watashi wa Tanaka desu, watashi wa Suzuki desu. Watashi wa Murakami desu. 
松本です。西村。ラオ。and Jane。so very very simple。you can do this on your own now。then。you can also。tell about your。profession。you can talk about your profession。the pattern does not change over here。again it is about yourself。So, the subject is over here which is I, after subject va will come and instead of name you can put your profession over here. So, you could be Dr. Isha, Engineer Gishi, you could be a nurse Kangofu, you could be a teacher Sensei. You could be a secretary, Hisho. You could be a lawyer, Bengoshi. So, whatever you are doing, whatever your profession, instead of name, you can put the profession and you can introduce yourself like this in a very, very simple manner. Watashi wa Isha desu. 私は看護婦です。私は秘書です。私は主婦です。主婦 is a housewife。私は学生です。学生 is a student。私は弁護士です。As I told you, lawyer。私は技師です。As I told you, engineer. So now these, this is this is a very very simple way of introducing yourself. Now you could say the whole thing once again. Hajime mashite. Watashi wa Tanaka desu. Watashi wa bengoshi desu. Dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. So you have your complete introduction now in a proper manner. Now, of course, this is you are just stating something. You are just telling something. But what about when you want to ask, are you a student? Are you a lawyer? Are you, are you a doctor? So, what will you do then? Very, very simple, nothing much has to be done. The pattern remains the same, it does not change at all. Instead, we just add something in the end, which is particle ka. Okay? We just add a simple particle in the end to make it an interrogative sentence. Statement over here, we have done watashi wa isha desu, simple, it is a statement, I am a doctor. But well, if I want to ask, are you a doctor? The word for you is, you have done the word for I, the word for you is anata, y o u, anata. Anata wa isha desu ka? Anata wa, anata wa isha desu ka? This particle ka over here. Ka is a interrogative particle, important particle, making a sentence into a question. Simple to be used in the end of a sentence. Now, one thing I want to tell you before I go any further, I have told you about watashi. Now, I give you this word anata, which means you. But in Japanese, whenever you ask a question, you will generally not use anata, which means you, you will take the name, use the name of the person you are asking. For example, if you are asking Tanaka san, you are asking Rao san or you are asking Jane san, then you will say Jane san anata wa isha desu ka? Tanaka san anata wa isha desu ka? Or just Tanaka san isha desu ka? That also can be done. Anata is of course you unlike English. In English of course we, we use we use you all the time for anyone, any age, but in Japanese anata is considered a little direct. So generally you would use the name of the person. We have this over here for you. Again Honda san and Kumar san over here. Honda is asking Kumar san. Kumar san wa gakusei desu ka? See, you can see Kumar san is given over here. So, Kumar san wa gakusei desu ka? 
はい、私は学生です。So, はい、this word はい、which I'm introducing here now means yes. Means yes, I am a student. 学生 is a student. So, Kumar さんは学生ですか Kumar さん、are you a student? Yes, I am a student. 私は学生です。Pattern is the same. 私は学生です。学生 of course. 学生です。So, it's very, very simple. A statement can be changed into an interrogative statement by just using ka. You can ask and answer in this very simple manner. Put a stop here and say hi, watashi wa so and so this. Short answers are, are also listed over here for you. For example, if I ask Kumar san wa gakse desu ka? So, instead of saying the whole thing, hi, watashi wa gakse desu, you can always say very simply, hi, so desu. It is a simple short answer, which means yes, what you are saying is correct. Or you can also make it even more simpler by just saying so this, so long sound this. Of course, this is not very formal, this is extremely informal to be used amongst friends only and not to your seniors at all. Now, over here you can, you can see ka is used to express the speaker's doubt and uncertainty about something. An interrogative sentence is formed by adding particle ka at the end of a sentence with a rising intonation. So, please remember the rising intonation is very, very important. With ka, always the intonation is high, that is what makes it into a question statement. So, please remember that. So, now a simple phrase for you. We have done so much. Vakarimashita ka? A simple statement over here. We have already done so much. I have explained so many things to you. <coughs> Vakarimashita ka? Have you understood? Have you understood what we have done so far? Vakarimashita ka? Say that please. Vakarimashita ka? This is with ka over here. This is a question I am asking you. So, you can say, hai vakarimashita. Hai vakarimashita. You have done hai means yes. Vakarimas means understood. So, vakarimashita ka means have you understood? Hai, I have understood. Now, last time I had talked to you about these three scripts, the hiragana, katakana and the kanji script. Of course, the hiragana script I have been doing with you last time I did and this time also I did about 15 characters with you, 15 symbols with you, 15 sounds with you. Now, today I will just introduce the kanji script a little. Just three kanjis for you today, not too many and uh, we will be doing it from this book here. It is 250 essential kanji uh, characters for everyday use. This book is, is very simple and why I find it interesting is that it has things given very clearly, the stroke order of the kanji, how it is to be drawn, how it is to be made is given very clearly in this book, which stroke comes first, which comes second and then how it is to be written. So, all those things are there and the most important part about the book is that how the kanji has come into being is also given very clearly in the book. This book is by um, Kanji Text Research Group of Tokyo University, 250 essential kanji for everyday use. You could use it at home. So, I will write it down for you on the board. It is a straight line, horizontal line drawn like this. The Chinese count their numbers and write kanji like this. It is counted like this and the picture, the character comes from the single finger which is horizontal in horizontal like this. I will show it to you. Can you see it? Can you, can you zoom in a little please? Okay, is this clear now? Is it visible? Over here, it's see. Look, look at this. This one over here. This is how it is. It is to be 
uh, written and shown. In a similar manner, we have ichi, we have ni also for you, two lines, two horizontal lines to be made like this. The first one is short and the second one is longer than the first one. If you make it like this, then it becomes an equal sign. So, that you have to please remember the first line is small and the second one is longer. This is ni like this. This is how they show it in Chinese. Then we have 3 which is san, you all know, ichi, ni and san. So, you will see it is very clear. The first one is long, the second one is a little shorter than the first one and the third one is the longest of them all. This is san. So, ichi, ni and san. Please, I will draw it once again for you, ichi, ni and san. Is it clear? Please remember that these are very simple. Of course, for the time being, we will only do one reading each for all of them. There are a number of readings for ichi, ni and san, but for the time being, only just one each. Now, we have a simple expression for you, kombao wa, kombao wa, please say that, kombao wa. So, it means good evening as you can see very clearly, but please remember this n over here is of course n, but the way it is pronounced is, press your lips like this, close your lips and it is an m sound. So, please kombao wa, kombao wa, kombao wa. So, please remember that it is easier and there is a reason for it. Of course, the reason we will do later when we do more words. Last time in our last lesson, we did vocabulary from 1 to 10. I hope you remember all of you. We did ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, nana, hachi, kyu. Jew. So, now after Jew, today I will just read this out for you from 11 till 30. Jew ichi, Jew ni, Jew san, Jew yon or she, Jew go. Ju Roku, Ju Nana or Shichi, Ju Hachi, Ju Q or Ku, Niju. Again, after twenty, it is back to one. So Niju Ichi. Ni ju ni, ni ju san, ni ju yon, ni ju go, ni ju roku, ni ju nana, ni ju hachi. Niju ku and Sanju. So, please remember these. These are very important. These will come very handy when we are doing other things later on. So, you need to remember your numbers very, very nicely. Of course, there is vocabulary for you. You can introduce yourself better now with this vocabulary. I will just read it out so that you get the pronunciation. Daigaku se, Ryugaku se, Kyoju, Sensei, Bengoshi, 
三年生。秘書。主婦。運転手。研究員。研究生。助手 Some of the vocabulary I have already done in the conversation. There is new vocabulary for you. You can learn it, introduce yourself in a better way. Of course, there is more vocabulary again. Kangofu, Oisha san, Keikan. 主婦アストロノートお相撲さんエアホステスパイレット、so、These are all new words, new ways of pronouncing these words 卵トラチータ、カサ、タコ、トカゲ、犬、ハト。So you got all this vocabulary earlier. Now it's with pictures, so it's easier. It's easier to remember with pictures. Visuals are always very strong. So please try to remember this. Now is the difficult part. You have your assignments, so you need to do these assignments at home. You've done a lot of vocabulary, some conversation you have done, a lot of new vocabulary you have learnt. So now we have the pictures for you. Here I have put these pictures. I want you to name what the object is. So please try to name them, and then we will see it. Tomorrow, whether you have done it properly or not. Assignment two is again match A and B. It's very simple. You have done this earlier in、uh, primary school, I'm sure. Match group A with group B. So it's similar to that. Group A has、uh, Japanese words here listed for you. Group B has the meanings. So I want you to match these. Then, as we did earlier. Given you some pictures, you have to name the pictures. You have done it, so please try to do it without looking at what is given. Over here, I have this small conversation which we did. I want you to use these words A, B, C, D, the options here. Use it in place of this word underlined, which is gakse. Use these and then answer these questions. These are short questions. You could answer them any which way you want. It could be short answers. It could be full answers, whichever you want, and you just see how much you remember actually. Well, this is for today. I think we've done quite a bit. We've done a lot of things, so I'll leave you here today. There is a lot of work for you also to do. Remember, memorize, learn, practice everything. Try writing also if you can with a small phrase again. Sore deva mina san, ashita mata aimasho, and this I will explain to you. Next time in our third class. Thank you very much.